The SEAL rescue team primed and ready. The Navy makes one last effort before employing lethal force. And what they do can now be revealed for the first time. 62 hours on the lifeboat. The Navy must prevent the gunmen from reaching shore with Captain Phillips a hostage. Rear Admiral McKnight offers a play-by-play -play of how they do it. Okay, one of the tactics that we're going to use to prevent the craft from getting ashore is we're going to use fire hoses. So you can see here from the Halliburton that they're firing, uh, they're using the fire hoses to basically push the, push the craft away. In the window, in the window. And when the fire hoses aren't enough, the Navy resorts to another tool in its arsenal, a Seahawk helicopter. Okay, here we have a situation where we've got the helicopter coming in to do a blocking maneuver. Now, if you've never been in a helicopter, this is very loud and it's a very aggressive. The Seahawks' powerful rotors generate hurricane force winds to push the lifeboat away from land while also wearing down the pirates' will to resist. Am I guessing they're inside there? They're just panicked. They don't know what's going to happen. Is somebody going to jump out of the helicopter? Is, is the ship going to run into it? So it's a very stressful situation. The Navy steps up their game. They then use the 15,000-ton USS Halliburton to block the lifeboat's efforts to reach shore. The combined tactics achieve the intended effect. After 20 minutes, the pirates have had enough, and they respond. The pirates were very agitated. The on-scene commander got very concerned. Suddenly, the front hatch opens. The pirates fire directly at the Halliburton. But no one on board is hit. Nor does the ship return fire. Yet. Easter Sunday, 83 hours on the lifeboat. It's running out of fuel. And the pirates are running out of options. They send a message to the Bainbridge requesting food and water. This is the opening the Navy's trained hostage negotiators are looking for. At that particular point, you can work into the hostage negotiation process from a position of strength. The captain needs water. We're concerned about his, his welfare, so we're going to give him water. And it also allows you the opportunity to collect information, collect intelligence. In giving the pirates what they want, the Navy SEALs hope to get in return the intelligence they need to do their job. 83 hours on the lifeboat. The Navy delivers food and water to the pirates and their hostage, Captain Richard Phillips. Then suddenly, a surprising request. The lead pirate wants to come aboard the USS Bainbridge. He's injured. He was getting infected, and there's, we can't give him the medical care that he needs, so he decided to come over and we gave him the medical care. That provides a great opportunity. That splits them apart. You know, that gives us uh, a pretty good uh, upper hand on the hostage negotiation process. But it also creates uncertainty in the three remaining pirates. They look out. He's on the deck of the Bainbridge, and he's drinking water. And um, that's a much better life than being cooped up in that little tiny, little tiny rowboat. Once aboard the Bainbridge, the pirate receives medical attention and begins to talk. He says they're running out of cot, an amphetamine-like drug prevalent in the region that helps relieve seasickness. And they also face another, bigger problem. The lifeboat is out of gas. 
Without fuel, the pirates can't make it to Somalia. Without cot, they're getting seasick. The Navy shifts its strategy and makes an offer. Now that they've run out of fuel, uh, they, they, just, they just don't want to drift. So in a mutual agreement, we'll say, OK, we will provide you tow and security. So we you know, basically try to take them under tow. 94 hours on the lifeboat. The deal made, the winch from the Bainbridge attaches to the lifeboat. The pirates think they're going to Somalia. The Navy has other plans. We're able to, to winch this thing in and control it, where it moves, where it goes in the water. So that is a major success. That success allows the Navy to set a trap. The SEAL team positions three snipers on the fantail of the Bainbridge. Unknown to the pirates, the winch begins to pull the lifeboat closer to the ship. Towing the boat allows them to control the situation even more. Closer gives them more precision of shot placement and they'll only hit the armed pirates, not the captain they're trying to rescue. The pirates have no idea they're just 75 feet from the Bainbridge. No idea they're close enough for a sniper to get a clean shot. Negotiations deteriorate. Seasick and agitated, the pirates grow more aggressive. One of the pirates um, was holding an AK-47 at the back of the captain. The on-scene commander got very concerned and thought that, uh, that the captain's life um, uh, was in imminent danger. Fingers on the trigger. The SEAL snipers await the moment when they can shoot. The guidance that we received through that whole of government approach was the president's um, uh, guidance and authorities that if we felt that at any point that the captain's life was in imminent danger and they had the ability to uh, disable the pirates, then uh, they had the authorities to do that. The SEALs get their orders. Kill the pirates to save the captain's life. The SEALs must choreograph simultaneous shots to take down the three pirates without killing the captain. They're perched aboard a ship moving in the ocean. Their targets are in a bobbing lifeboat. And there's only one chance to get it right. For a sniper, the ultimate stopping shot is the cranial cavity, the headshot. It does no good if they shoot the pirates and the guy can still pull the trigger while he's wounded. Captain Phillips has done his job. He stayed in the same spot on the lifeboat for the entire four days. The SEALs can avoid harming him. The snipers lock onto the heads of two pirates in the cab window. But they're unsure of the third pirate's position. The third sniper waits for a visual. Once he gets it, they can all fire. This is what they train for. If those snipers don't feel they can hit the target, they won't pull the trigger. Seasick, the third pirate pokes his head out of the lifeboat window. The third seal communicates. Target acquired. Pirates just went down. This is a covert operation. Only the snipers know the exact position of the pirates at this moment. They fire in perfect synchronization. The 96-hour lifeboat ordeal ends that quickly. This amazing new footage shows the just-rescued captain as he gets off the chopper. And I'm very, very proud of our Navy, and I'm very, very proud of our SEALs, and uh, I'm glad we got the captain home. Next to Phillips, their faces obscured by the Navy, two of the SEALs who participated in the rescue. These men will remain shrouded in mystery. They don't ask to be identified. They don't ask to be thanked.
This is a great event for the Navy. It shows the capability of the Navy and Marine Corps team, and these sailors and Marines are just doing tremendous work out there.